hello everybody and welcome to another youtube video and in today's video we are going to be diving extensively into the several types of continuous probability distribution not only will i be mentioning this type of continuous probability distributions i would also be mentioning the details that defines them that is the parameters that defines them then i will be giving real life situations real life scenarios in which we can actually be using these distributions in several fields including business field the finance field the social science fields uh, the machine learning and the data analysis field as a whole if you want to know more about the mathematics that defines the continuous probability distribution i've actually made a separate video about that you can actually check that video in the description i'll be linking that or i can also link that video in the top right corner so you can actually just check that video out after watching this video so in no particular order let us start with the concept of the uniform probability distribution so a uniform probability distribution also known as the rectangular probability distribution because it has a rectangular shape is a distribution that we use whenever we have a random variable in a scenario in a situation and the probabilistic value attached to each of those random variables are actually constants that is they actually have the same value or true so in simple terms for a uniform distribution we have uh, several values of random variable x and we have a fixed value of probabilistic value attached to each of this random variable so let's say we have random variables x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 down to like xn each of these random variables will be having a fixed probabilistic value of let's say p for x1 the probabilistic value is p for x the probabilistic value is p and stuff like that this is one of the reason why the uniform distribution is very applicable in lotteries and gambling because in certain types of lotteries and casino games the assumption of equal likelihood for each possible outcome can be modeled by using a uniform distribution for example when rolling a fair six-sided die each face has an equal probability of one over six that is if you roll a fair die just once there is a one over six chance that one is going to show up there is a one over six chance that two is going to show up down to probability that six is going to show up and that is also one over six the uniform distribution is also applicable in weather forecasting in the sense that meteorologists can actually use the uniform distribution to model the uncertainty in predicting rainfall amount if there is no specific information suggesting one amount is more likely than other then a uniform distribution can actually be used so what are the parameters that defines a uniform distribution so basically i will use the letter x to represent a random variable in general and that when a random variable x is defined by a uniform distribution this is the notation that we use we have x and we have the approximate sign then we have u into bracket a b which simply reads that a random variable is defined by a uniform distribution now the uniform distribution itself is defined by just two intervals a and b which can be positive integers only so that means that the uniform distribution is always within a range of values between values a and values b for example when you roll a fair die the range of value is between one to six so the random variable of the experiment of rolling a fair die uh, is our x approximate we have u then we have one down to six so that means that it's going to be happening between one and down to six so several experiments that is defined by a uniform distribution also have several values of intervals that defines them since a uniform distribution is actually a, a typical example of a continuous probability distribution it also have formula for the expected value the variance and the standard deviation the expected value that defines a uniform distribution is actually given as uh, e of x or we can use mu is equals to b plus a divided by 2 or we can say a plus b uh, divided by 2 the variance formula that actually defines a uniform distribution is given as a v into bracket x that is the variance is equals to b minus a all squared divided by 12 and the probability density function f of x that defines a uniform probability distribution is given as f of x is equals to 1 over b minus a let's talk about the concept of the exponential probability distribution to understand the concept of the exponential probability distribution we need to like go back and understand the concept of the poisson 
distribution because these two distributions are kind of the distributions that are actually time dependent that is uh the measure time relative to the scenario that we are actually working with so in summary a poisson distribution is basically used to calculate probabilistic value attached to scenarios attached to uh several occurrence if the event we are talking about is actually occurring at a fixed rate so let's say that we have uh, a scenario of cars passing through a school gate okay and we have like uh, three cars passing through the school gate in 10 seconds so the fixed rate of event right here is three cars in 10 seconds then we can actually ask questions like so if three cars are passing through the school gate in 10 seconds so what is the chance that 50 cars will pass through the school gate in one hour what is the chance that 20 cars will pass through the school gate in in 20 minutes you know questions like this can actually be answered using the concept of the poisson distribution and the main condition right here is that the event must be occurring at a fixed rate so the poisson distribution is trying to calculate the chance that an event is going to be occurring based on the fact that a single event has actually occurred at a fixed rate but exponential is going to like flip this at uh, the other way around in the sense that the exponential distribution is interested in how much time it takes uh for each of the events of a poisson Poisson distribution to actually happen. So in a Poisson, we have event one, we have event two, we have event three, and we are looking for the chance that event one will occur, event two will occur, event three will occur. But for an exponential distribution, we are interested in how much it takes between two events. So that means event one and event two. How much time will actually elapse before uh, the subsequent events? will actually occur since the exponential distribution is actually time-based this is one of the reasons why it is actually very applicable in queuing systems the time between arrivals of customers at a service point let's say the checkout counter can be modeled using an exponential distribution it helps us to understand how long a customer has to wait before the next customer arrives the exponential distribution is also applicable in call centers because the time between incoming calls at a call center can be modeled using an exponential distribution this helps in workplace management and optimizing resources to handle call volume effectively for a random variable that is defined by an exponential distribution we actually use the notation x we have the approximate sign then we have e into brackets lambda where lambda in this case of ours represents the fixed rate at which the event we are interested is actually occurring just like we did for the concept of the uniform distribution it has the expected value it has the variance and it also have its own probability density function f of x so let us start with the expected value the formula for the expected value is given as e of x is equals to 1 over lambda and the formula for the variance var or into bracket x is equals to 1 over lambda squared and the probability density function that defines uh, an exponential distribution is given as f of x is equals to lambda e raised to the power of minus lambda x now let's talk about the concept of the gamma distribution so basically the gamma distribution is actually uh, a generalized version of the exponential distribution and it is the distribution that defines the chi-square distribution which i will still talk about in a couple of minutes later the gamma distribution is defined by two parameters we have lambda and we have alpha lambda is the scale parameter which defines the size of the distribution and alpha is the shape parameter which defines the shape of the distribution just like we did for the concept of the exponential and the uniform distribution we can also use uh, a notation to denote uh, a distribution or a random variable defined by a gamma distribution we use the notation x and then we have the approximate sign then we have g into bracket lambda and alpha the formula for the expected value of a random variable defined by a gamma distribution is given as e of x is equals to alpha divided by lambda and the formula for the variance is equals to alpha divided by lambda squared so let's talk about the next type of continuous probability distribution and that is the most popular of them i'm talking about the normal distribution 
when it comes to data analysis statistics data science or machine learning one way or the other you must have actually come across the popular normal distribution and now this distribution is popular because uh it is very applicable to real life situations that is most of the random variables that we actually have in real life kind of follow uh, a normal distribution or they kind of have a pattern that is actually similar to the normal distribution variables like height weight exam score uh iq just to mention a few are those variables that are actually that follows a normal distribution that is why when it comes to uh talking about iq scores and uh, exam scores in general the normal distribution is being used and that now leads me to the first application of the normal distribution it is used in education when it comes to education and uh, educational assessment the normal distribution is actually very applicable take for example this is what we use in the concept of standardized test score that is the standardized test score is basically defined by a normal distribution it is also applicable in grading that is the distribution of grades in a large population of students can be defined or approximated by a normal distribution the normal distribution is also applicable in psychology meaning we can use it to define iq scores we can also use it to define personality traits the normal distribution is applicable in meteorology in economics and social sciences in medical research in physics it is also applicable in finance and economics in the sense that the normal distribution can be used to monitor the change in stock prices and also be used by financial analysts as the distribution to model and predict price movement in this same finance and economics the normal distribution is basically applicable in risk management in the sense that when it comes to finance the normal distribution can be used to model the distribution that defines the returns on investment and assesses risk the normal distribution can also be used in quality control and manufacturing that is it can be used to define the product defect and also process controls and don't let us forget the fact that biological variables such as height and weight are actually defined in nature by the normal distribution so when it comes to biological measurements such as blood pressure and cholesterol levels they all can be measured using the normal distribution the normal distribution is also known as the bell shape distribution because it has the shape of a bell and it is one of those distribution that is actually symmetric in nature now this is a very popular distribution and it has a wide range of applications and it is very interesting so i will still make a separate video that talk extensively about the concepts of the normal distribution and the standardized normal distribution just like we've done for every other type of distribution uh, a random variable that is defined by a normal distribution is based on the following notations we have x and we have the approximate sign then we have n into brackets we have mu and we have sigma where mu in this case of ours represents the population mean and sigma represents the population standard deviation that simply implies that the normal distribution is defined by the population mean and the population standard deviation now let me give you a bit of uh info right here although i have the plan to talk extensively on this in a separate video for the normal distribution the mean of a normal distribution determines the center or determines the position of the distribution and the standard deviation of a normal distribution determines the spread or the width of the distribution now let's talk about the formula for the expected value the variance and the probability density function that defines a normal distribution for a normal distribution the value of the expected value is equal to the population mean of the distribution as a whole that means e of x is equal to mu is simple as that and the formula for the variance is equal to the variance of the population distribution and uh, the f of x which defines the probability density function of a normal distribution is given as f of x is equals to 1 over sigma the square root of 2 pi we have e 
Then we have raised the power of minus 1 over 2 into bracket x minus mu divided by sigma all squared. This is quite mouthful and this is one of the reasons why we actually don't use the normal distribution the way it comes. We actually try to standardize it and get a z-score and work with the area embedded or swept by this z-score. Let's talk about the next type of distribution that is similar to the normal distribution and that is the distribution that is known as the student t distribution aka the t distribution the student t uh, distribution aka the t distribution can be seen as a low budget version of the normal distribution in the sense that the normal distribution is always focused on the value of the population data it's always focused on the population distribution as a whole and can handle large and huge amount of sample size but when it comes to us working with a very small sample size at the threshold right here is usually between uh, 50 or 30 so when your sample size is more than 30 we actually assume we have a large sample size and when your sample size is lesser than 30 we actually assume we have a smaller sample size so when you find yourself in situations whereby uh, you have a very small sample Sample size but you still want to you like use uh, a normal distribution to define your scenario then you have to use the t distribution because whenever you want to work with your normal distribution you have to know the value of the population variance or i can say the population standard deviation when you are working with the t distribution you actually don't need the value of the population variance instead you are going to be using the value of the sample standard deviation or the sample variance because for a t distribution you are making use of the sample data but for a normal distribution you are making use of the population data now the shape of a t distribution is dependent on the sample size that is uh the size of the sample that was extracted from the population and uh, the the closer your sample size is to the population the more the t distribution tends to look like the normal distribution so the t distribution is basically applicable wherever we can actually use the normal distribution just that in this time we are going to be using a smaller sample size relative to the concept of the t distribution now let's talk about the next type of continuous probability distribution and that is what is called the beta continuous distribution the beta distribution is a continuous probability distribution that is used to model random variables with values falling within a finite interval and this interval is usually between zero and one we also need to know that the beta distribution is also suitable to model for percentages and proportion. The interval that defines a beta distribution is between 0 and 1, with 0 being known as the lower boundary and 1 being known as the upper boundary. Just like the gamma distribution, the beta distribution is defined by two parameters and that is alpha and beta. Just like we had for other examples that we've mentioned previously, we also have uh, a notation to define the distribution that defines uh, a beta distribution. We have that x is approximated by b uh, into bracket alpha and we have comma beta and there's also the formula for the expected value and the variance and also the probability density function that defines uh, a beta distribution. For the expected value, the formula is that e of x is equals to alpha divided by alpha plus b and for the variance the formula is given as alpha times beta all divided by alpha plus beta plus one in one bracket times uh, alpha plus beta all squared in another bracket and the formula for the probability density function that defines uh, a beta distribution is actually quite mouthful so i'll just uh, paste the formula on the screen for you to see right now just like the other distributions that we've actually mentioned the beta distribution is also applicable in several fields and here are some of the applications of the beta distribution the beta distribution is applicable in conversion rate optimization that is when it comes to online marketing businesses often want to optimize conversion rates such as proportion of website visitors who make a purchase now the beta distribution can be used to model uncertainty about the true conversion rate and update the distribution as more data 
becomes available. The beta distribution is also applicable in quality control in the sense that when it comes to manufacturing processes, the beta distribution can be applied to model the proportion of defective items in uh, a product batch. This is particularly useful in quality control scenarios where you want to estimate the proportion of defective items with uncertainty. The beta distribution is also very applicable in AB testing. The AB testing is a common technique used in marketing and product development to compare two versions of a product or web page. The beta distribution can be used to model the conversion rate of the two versions, allowing for a Bayesian approach to estimate the probability that one version is better than the other. The beta distribution is also applicable in insurance, reliability analysis, and Bayesian inference in general. Let's talk about the next type of the continuous probability distribution, and that is what is called the Fisher's distribution, aka the F distribution. The F distribution, aka the Fisher's distribution, is a probability distribution that arises in the context of statistical hypothesis testing and uh, analysis of variance, also known as ANOVA. Okay, so the Fisher's distribution is applicable in ANOVA, it is applicable in regression analysis, it is also applicable in quality control in the sense that when it comes to manufacturing and quality control, the F distribution is used to analyze variations in product processes. For instance, it might be used to assess whether there are significant differences in the variance of product dimensions between different production lines. In genetic studies and bioinformatics, the F distribution can be applied to compare the variability in the gene expression levels among different experimental conditions or group. The F distribution is also applicable in economics in the sense that the F distribution can be employed in various statistical tests. For example, it might be used to compare the variance of economics indicators across different time periods or regions. And finally, uh, the F distribution is also applicable in regression analysis in the sense that it can be used to test the overall significance of the regression models. This involves comparing the fit of the model with predictors against a model with no predictors. And these are the types of continuous probability distribution I feel like uh, you might actually need in every day of your life in data analysis, in machine learning and other fields such as economics and social sciences. We also have other types of distributions such as the chi-square distribution, we have the Pareto distribution, we have the Gumbel distribution, just to mention a few. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I've been able to talk extensively about the different type of continuous probability distributions that we have in statistics and data science in general. If you enjoyed this video and you actually learned something new from this video, I would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Do you feel I missed something or you have some questions for me? Please go down to the comment section and drop your questions for me. I would be willing and be ready to attend to those questions of yours. Do you need to learn data analysis and you don't know where to start? I actually have a video where I talk extensively on how to become a data analyst. I will link that video right here. You can check that out. And if you want to have a, a statistics playlist that will help you kickstart your data analysis journey, I also have a video, a playlist rather, right here for you that can help you out. Thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.